Today's been the first day of the Nobel Prize Inspiration Initiative, so we've been really lucky to have Dr Brown and Dr Goldstein here talking about their um, history of collaboration and some of their discoveries. It's sort of humbling uh, to come here to Cambridge where so many fundamental discoveries have been made. They're, they're superb role models because they really demonstrate the essence of what it takes to be successful as a scientist, which is to collaborate with other people in the field. In their case, they've established a 42-year long collaboration, which is remarkable not just in its length, but in its productivity. It triggers questions about what it takes to do that, how you overcome culture differences and competition to actually end up with something more productive. Now, Joe and I came uh, to these studies from very different backgrounds. Joe was born in Sumter, South Carolina, and he was raised in a town called Kingstree, South Carolina. I used to think it was in the middle of nowhere, and then I went to visit it, and I realized the middle of nowhere is a defined place. It's the middle of nowhere. Kingstree is off to the side of the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you imagine a Nobel Prize winner, like, uh, you know, <laughs> somebody very, very, uh, different from the normal people, but at the end of the day they are scientists that just enjoy to the extreme the work that they do. And the adventure began at the National Institutes of Health when we saw this little girl. She's, she was six years old, in fact she had her first heart attack when she was three years old. And our interest in this disease led to a 40-year partnership. The two laureates here today, they were previously um, doctors who decided to go on a path of science and I wanted to see what their experiences were like and sort of why they wanted to go down the science route. The issue was, could we possibly figure out what was wrong with these children? They've been meeting with students, giving lectures and basically, um, I guess, shedding knowledge like a bee spreads pollen. What were the sources of inspiration for you to pursue research? I would like to ask about uh, the ethics of science. What technological advances had the biggest impact on your research? Well, that's an easy question to answer. It turns out, I think monoclonal antibodies and, and cDNA cloning. The opportunity to meet with other scientists, to talk about science, and just to remind yourself what's going on in the scientific community, it's very important. Let me begin by thanking Mother Nature for inventing cholesterol and also for uh, not figuring out how it works. I think they're seeing what the creative process looked like and that's both inspirational and that's a real key part of this, but it's also informative. It basically indicates to the students, young scientists, that hey, this is something that I can actually do. This was actually really, really very enlightening and not something that I believe that you'd hear on a general day-to-day -day basis. Certainly. I found that, um, that it has totally exceeded my expectations. So I think the take home is that you, you really need to be honest, transparent, respectful of people that you're collaborating with, understand what motivates them, um, try and work out whether you have joint goals, joint objectives, uh, and really again share the enthusiasm and the passion because if you do that then I think there is a recipe for success there.